Hello guys, quite recently on Twitter I asked for some repositories to review for you guys on YouTube to learn something and for me to learn something I always keep learning and Kevin Woblik suggested his own repository link ace app which is this one free on github which is bookmark archive which is self-hosted so you can add your own links so I've installed it locally it looks like this on my local computer so I can add a link for example HTTP some YouTube video and it's added then I can have lists tags and all of that stuff but in this video I want to emphasize the installation of that link ace we will review the code itself in the future videos but for now I want to demonstrate how the setup works so link ace is partly created for non laravel developers so you can install that from docker or without docker it's a visual setup like wordpress or any other cms and how to create such visual setups with validation with steps let's review in this video so I have implemented everything that is said in this setup, got the zip file or in fact cloned the repository, then copied env example into env, then run key generate, and from here the visual setup should take over. I've pointed my web server which is locally Laravel VLA, and then the main URL of the domain redirects to setup start. And first how it works, check requirements. There's a separate URL for checking the requirements, which is all good. Then I continue and then I go to a separate page of setup database. Then I edit my host, which is root and without password default Laravel Valet, but I've created the database behind the scenes. Behind the scenes, it has run the migrations actually. Then I need to set up the account, which is, for example, admin.com something, create the account. And then I go to the dashboard and I'm in as an administrator. So how to perform all of that in the code, or in fact, how Kevin did that. Let's take a look. In the routes web, there is a list of routes and controllers related to setup, setup slash something, and a few controllers related to that. Immediately, I will comment, and by the way, take my comments with a grain of salt, so to speak. So my comments are not the right way. It's maybe how I would do that a bit differently, because in Laravel and generally in web development, there are dozens of ways to perform the same thing. So my comment is just an alternative way to the author's way. So in this case, I would probably create a route group with prefix of setup and with the middleware that is setup completed or not. And then I would get it all probably in one or maybe two controllers because now there's meta controller, which is responsible only for welcome and for finish for completing. Then there's requirements, database and account controllers. That's debatable. It could be one controller like setup controller with methods of database account and requirements and stuff like that. But maybe how I would do that. Now let's go into that meta controller. It's great that it's grouped in the namespace of app HTTP controllers setup. So all the controllers are in one folder. And then welcome controller just sets up the welcome page. And then when it's completed, so it goes back full circle in routes web from here. After all of those actions, it goes back to complete, which marks the setup as completed and then show the view. And that mark setup completed is a protected function or private function of that controller which does the editing in .env file. So gets the content of .env file, replaces setup completed false to true, and then puts the new updated content. So basically setup is complete or not depends on this variable in .env file. And that is questionable because it's quite easy to edit it manually and kind of fake that the installation succeeded. So maybe it would make more sense to actually check to have some kind of middleware, whether the database is created, whether the account is set up, whether all file permissions are okay and stuff like that, instead of just relying on one env variable, but it works. Let's move on to other controllers and let's see what's inside. In requirements controller, we basically check all the requirements and this is the list. Whether the extension is loaded, PHP extension, PHP version ID, and then is it writable, the ENV is writable or storage path, and we get all of those results into an array. 
And here we can see that Kevin really likes the private methods or protected methods in the controllers, which is okay. It's one way of doing things. So I'm constantly asked how to structure the project. So these methods, should it be helper? Should it be services? Should it be somewhere else? It's perfectly fine to have them as protected or private methods in controller, maybe except for the case where it's too many of those protected properties or methods, and then controller gets too big. But in general, it's an okay practice. In this case, however, probably I wouldn't do it this way because it's controller from just two methods. And why wouldn't we move that into here? So do we actually need that method? So if we cut and paste it here, so we have the results, we have the success variable, then we don't call this one and we delete this one. So I'll just do live refactoring. So we have results. And also success variable, it is just used locally to pass into the view. And in the view, if we go to requirements blade, success is only used once to provide the button, whether it's disabled or not. So why we need that variable? So we can do the same operation in the blade like this. If there is no false in the results, then we show button primary. So it makes the controller a bit shorter. I'm a fan of shorter controllers, but that's a personal preference again. In my small refactoring in live mode, I've avoided one method and one variable, but maybe you prefer it to be more structured, a bit more code, but maybe more readable. It's a personal preference. Next, we go into database controller, which is probably the most interesting one in this video. And here's how it looks. So we need to fill the database details, which then would be saved in .env file. And here I've encountered a really interesting bug or actually a feature of validation. So on my local Laravel Valet, I have root username for database and without password. This is how default Laravel Valet works and it's okay for me locally. So I don't have password to the database. I know it's kind of a security issue and I wouldn't do that on staging or remote servers, but locally it works for me. Now look what happens here. If I put an empty password, and user root, configure database, it shows please fill in this field. So Kevin probably didn't think for the case where it would be installed locally without password and I needed to go to database controller and in the method of configure, which is actually store the configs, there's a form request file, which is great that validation is in form request and I needed to remove db password required here and also in the blade file, in the form, there is db host, db port, db name, db user, and db password, and I needed to remove that required. So that's just a small thing that I've encountered. It's not necessarily wrong, something wrong with that code. It's just my own kind of my own problem. Interesting thing. And then configure is kind of a store method, post method to save the data, to save the form inputs. And look what we have here. Again, private methods or protected methods create temp database connection. This is interesting. So we populate the DB config array, which is by default config database connections MySQL. So it comes from config database here MySQL. So default value is all these ones but then we override some properties with the ones that came with credentials. So host, user, password, and all of that. And then we set the config on the fly. We don't really store that in the config database or env file yet. Create temporary database connection. And I really like how that method is called. So temporary, create temp database connection. So we set that one. And then if we go back to the configure method, we create that connection, then we check if database already has some data, then we redirect back with the message. Do you want to override that data? And database has data is also another protected function of the same controller, which just checks the list table names. This is doctrine method and we use our own DB connection setup, which we have just set up this one so config set database connection setup so this one becomes the connection name and then we check if there is any data if there is any table and if there is we redirect back with message but if everything is fine we move on to migrate the database and migrate database is guess what another protected method of the same controller 
And what we do here is artisan call. We're calling artisan migrate fresh. Force means that it wouldn't ask if we really want to run that. Then database is the same setup. We have just set that up and then no interaction. If there is any exception happening, then we redirect back with flash with message. And then the last thing we do, if the migration is successful, we store the configuration finally in .env file. So similar thing, we just store dbconfig not in the config anymore, but we override the env file values with our own config, file put, and then we redirect successfully to, let's scroll up, redirect route to set up account. So database is done. Now we can just set up the administrator account. And for that, we go to account controller, which has index just shows the account form, which is account blade. This one, just the form to have name, email and all of that. And then if we fill in that form, we go to register method. And here we have a method create new user create with request input, we log in and we redirect to set up complete, which just shows the success page. And here, what is the create new user? If we click that in, we land on the file app actions, fortify create new user. And this is interesting. For creating link ace, Kevin decided not to use any jet stream or breeze, but use fortify. So just the backend thing. If we go to composer JSON, you wouldn't find any jet stream or breeze here, but there is a Laravel Fortify. So you can use Laravel Fortify backend for managing the user registration and login and stuff, but on the front end, you can do whatever. So in this case, there's Laravel repository without any starter kit, but it uses Fortify under the hood with the default class of create new user of Fortify. And that's it, setup complete is just metacontroller complete method, which we've seen in the very beginning, mark setup complete, and go to the dashboard. So this is in a nutshell how you can perform the setup, the visual setup for any Laravel project for those users who are not Laravel developers but want to just click around. So click, click, next, next visually and install the project. So now it's your turn, guys. What do you think? What would you do differently? What is the thing that you liked a lot? So we shouldn't only comment if something is wrong. Let's just praise people for their job for free actually. And Kevin did really good job here. I will do some more review on this repository later, but you can thank Kevin by following him on Twitter here and also check out his projects here on Twitter. He mentions a lot of them. You can also follow me on Twitter at Povilos Corp, where I tweet a lot, as you can see, 16,000 tweets and 11,000 followers. So if you want to get some new stuff about Laravel, or general web development, or productivity, or success stories, or lifestyle, or content creation, yeah, follow me on Twitter. And also support me financially by checking out one of the three products that you can see on the screen, Livewire Set of Components, Quick Admin Panel Generator, and my courses on Teachable. And see you guys in other videos on YouTube.